Changing the temperature can have a big effect on the position of equilibrium of a reaction. You can use Le Chatelier's principle to predict the effect of temperature. It tells you that for an endothermic reaction, increasing the temperature moves the position of equilibrium towards the products, and for an exothermic reaction it has the opposite effect. But these are qualitative predictions, and we also need to be able to make quantitative predictions about the effect of temperature on the position of equilibrium. And that means using the equilibrium constant, K. And this is where equation 15.10 comes in. It's also known as the Van Hoff equation. It's derived from two equations that you should have met already. Delta G equals minus RT log K and delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Now both of these are expressions for the standard Gibbs energy of reaction, delta G. And if we put them equal to one another, we can eliminate the delta G term, and with a little rearrangement, we get equation 15.10. Now let's look at the equation more closely. The delta S over R term will be constant for a given reaction, assuming that delta S doesn't change significantly over the temperature range involved. And the delta H over R term will also be constant for a given reaction, again assuming that delta H doesn't change over the temperature range involved. So the only variables in this equation are log K and T. And you can see that log k is proportional to minus 1 over t. Now for an endothermic reaction, delta H is positive. When t increases, the minus delta H over RT term becomes less negative, which means that k increases, showing that the equilibrium position moves to the right, as Le Chatelier's principle predicts. So equation 15.10 agrees with Le Chatelier's principle, but we can go further and use this equation to calculate how much K changes for a given change in temperature, provided we know delta S and delta H. We can also use this equation to calculate values for delta S and delta H experimentally. The equation has the form Y equals MX plus C, so we can use a graphical method. We measure K at several different temperatures and then plot a graph of the natural logarithm of K against 1 upon T. The gradient of this graph is minus delta H over R and the intercept with the vertical axis is delta S over R. So equation 15.10 does a lot more than the simple qualitative predictions you get with Le Chatelier's principle.